everybody for joining us uh, today. We are having this virtual uh, information meeting about the Pontiac Trail and North Territorial Road roundabout that we'll, we will be constructing next year. And so um, my name is Emily Kaiser and I will be the meeting host today. I am the communications manager here at the Road Commission. I'm gonna kick things off with a little bit of housekeeping and then I will turn it over to our project manager who will give us a presentation about the project as we have it planned so far. And then we will open it up to Q&A. So our project manager for this project is Mark McCullough. He is the senior project manager over our permit section, but also uh, manages some of our, our larger projects. And so you've got Mark's contact information right here. I'll show you a couple different places that you can find Mark's information, his contact information, so you do not have to furiously write it down, uh, but we'll have it a couple times in the presentation. I'll also show you where you can find it on our website. So just a, a few housekeeping items. So the meeting audio and video is being recorded and it will be posted to wcroads.org in the next day or two. That is our website and I will show you the page where it will be posted at the end of this presentation. Uh, uh, when we get to the Q&A period, you will be asked to virtually raise your hand and uh, to ask your question during that time. And so I will provide instructions at that time of how you can do that either from your computer or from your smartphone. And lastly, we do have chat enabled on this meeting. So if you have a question that you'd rather write to me in chat, and uh, we will ask that and read that off from the chat messages during the Q&A period. So feel free to use chat for the Q&A if you'd prefer that versus asking a question verbally at that time. And with that, I will turn it over to Mark to talk about this exciting project. Thank you, Emily. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning uh, for this interaction uh, and a discussion uh, and presentation of Pontiac Trail and North Territorial uh, Roundabout Project. Uh, so we're very excited to present this. We're very excited to uh, build this for the community as we feel it's going to provide a lot of benefit uh, to the region. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it should be a very exciting project. So go ahead and uh, go to the next slide there. Thanks, Emily. All right, so give you a little bit of the lay of the land here. Uh, this is a aerial view of the southwest corner of Salem Township, whereby you see North Territorial and Pontiac Trail at the star there. And it is um, a, what I'll call a interesting intersection in that it's geometry, uh, being that there is a diverse angle a uh, significant angle there uh, between uh, the two uh, intersecting roadways, whereby it can uh, create some challenges uh, depending upon the time of day and uh, weather, of course, uh, for that intersection. So uh, based upon the geometrics of it and based upon the traffic volumes of it, we felt that there was a pending need to be able to do a project here. Go ahead, next slide, Emily, more of the same with the current state. So this is what uh, on the roadside on Pontiac Trail, as you're looking south, uh, Edis Market is what you see on the right side of the screen. And over to the left side, a little off the screen there is the flower bar, uh, which uh, primarily serves coffee. And um, yeah, so that's uh, Pontiac Trail and North Territorial Road is the intersecting. It is an all way stop controlled intersection for those who aren't familiar with it. Um, thank you, Emily, uh, located in Salem Township. And the primary reason for why we desire for this intersection to be improved is because of the congestion that occurs at the 2 p.m. peaks of the day. PM, the eight, did I say p.m., two peak periods that happen throughout the day. So a.m. peak, uh, what we'll call morning rush hour, is when you're primarily where people are heading south uh, to from say, uh, South Lyon to Ann Arbor, and I would say uh, east uh, as they go towards Wayne County, and then vice versa in the PM where it is heading north on Pontiac Trail to head back to uh, uh, Oakland County slash uh, South Lyon, and then also uh, likewise heading westbound uh, towards Dexter on North Territorial Roads. So be, based on those congested volumes, there's a lot of delay. Uh, one can calculate a lot of uh, undesirable emissions from uh, wasted fuel that happens from uh, vehicles standing in line uh, as they're waiting to for their turn to go through the intersection. So overall, we feel this is going to be a tremendous benefit to the community. Next slide, Emily. Okay, so the primary question now that we're like, okay, we knew that we wanted to have a project at this intersection. 
the question really was, is like, okay, we have all these variables we need to look at, traffic volumes, delay, crash history. For the most part, crashes at this intersection are minimal. They do occur, but uh, there was nothing outstanding about this particular intersection versus some other intersections uh, whereby uh, safety was the primary need. Safety is always forefront, foremount in our decision-making process, but uh, it was the congestion that drove the need for this project. So with that being said, we're like, okay, we need to make some type of decision here. Uh, and what's in the best interest of the public? What's in the best interest of utilizing what we can provide the most bang for our buck with our resources that are available to us? In other words, do we go with a traffic signal or roundabout? A traffic signal did meet what we call warrants for this intersection. Um, whereby it met enough delay hours of the day for delay to uh, require that require uh, warrant a signal be placed at this intersection. But with a traffic signal comes certain complications, being that if you don't have a left turn lane at that intersection, uh, provide for safe refuge for left turns, it can also create backup traffic to the point where you really haven't accomplished much with what you spent if you didn't provide that. Likewise, um, with the, with the uh, severe angles that the, between those two intersections there, between the stop bars of both sides, it takes longer for a car, any vehicle, to travel through that intersection, whereby it exposes them to cross traffic, uh, which can create a T-bone collision should someone, say, run a red light. And because of that, and the cost associated with providing the uh, meeting all of the um, what we call our engineering requirements to provide a traffic signal there, we felt the roundabout was a better choice. The roundabout by itself, because of its design, slows traffic down and it promotes safety uh, amongst uh, the traffic that's there just based upon its entry angle deflections and the speeds that people enter circulate around the central island and exit too. So although both alternatives uh, are going to be um, not going to be cheap, the, the roundabout from a safety standpoint, a congestion standpoint, and a cost benefit standpoint turned out to be our preferred option. So that's why we went with the roundabout. Next slide, Emily. We are using um, primarily federal monies uh, to use this, uh, excuse me, to build this project. Every time you go to the gasoline pump and purchase gas, you pay a state tax and you pay a federal tax at that pump. Uh, the, the federal money goes to Washington, D.C. It goes through a very complex formula and then gets redistributed back to states and, and then regions within the states for agencies such as the Washtenaw County Road Commission to spend. The construction estimate for this project is going to be uh, 1.5 million plus or minus. It may come in under that depending upon final decisions that we make with uh, the design of the intersection. Next slide, please, Emily. Okay, so this is a rendering of how the footprint, the layout, the two-dimensional layout of the roundabout uh, is presented at this time. It is still, um, the, the geometry is pretty much in place, that's where it needs to be in order for us to hit targets to enhance safety and meet capacity. Um, the reason why it's located where it's at is because if the angles come in um, at, at too much of a off, they, they, let, me re, let me try to start again. Roundabouts work well when the angles are at or near 90 degrees to one another from the intersection. That's when they perform. They don't have to be at 90, but the closer they are to 90 is when they work really well and they provide the capacity and the safety enhancements that uh, they're noted to be uh, to uh, produce upon outcome and once they're built. So it's unfortunate that we can't put it, say, closer to where the existing footprint of the intersection resides now. But uh, the, the reasons behind that is the science behind the roundabout based on what I just stated there. So that's why uh, if you see, uh, wow, that's a lot of land that's going to have to be acquired through property owners on the south uh, east leg, you understand why now that's true. Next slide, Emily. Okay, let's talk about the tentative schedule. 
uh, right now, we are projecting that uh, work will begin in mid-June once school is out for the region. And it's going to take, give or take, 10 to 12 weeks where uh, traffic uh, will be uh, closed to through users. So uh, in other words, we project that if everything goes well and there's not any unforeseen events, that this roundabout should be open to the public by Labor Day or sooner. Next slide, Emily. So the the 10,000 foot view game plan, we'll call it here. Highlights of this is we're gonna be grading the intersection because the roadway will no longer be present where it's at today. We will be doing drainage and storm sewer work uh, in order to get water uh, to where uh, it should be going uh, for discharge uh, into uh, designated and identified uh, what we call outlets, streams per se. Uh, we will construct curb and place pavement we will then, uh, as we wrap up uh, the project, we'll install permanent signs, we'll provide pavement markings, there will be some intersection lighting that we're in discussions with DTE about, and then we're going to do yard restoration. In other words, we're going to put topsails down, seed, mulch, fertilizer, and uh, ensure that grass is uh, established uh, at an appropriate time after the project is open to traffic. Next slide, Emily. So we're going to give you a few visuals here uh, from past roundabout projects of what will be occurring here at Pontiac Trail and North Territorial Road. So one of the first things we do is we would remove and relocate the roadbed for this. Sometimes we use a road pulverizer. In this case, there, there won't be too much of that because we're relocating the road significantly and we'll be bringing in a uh, pretty sufficient number of uh, cubic yards of earth in order to rebuild the roadbed. Next slide, Emily. So once we have the foundation of the roadway built to <clears throat> a plan grade, we then start preparing for curb and gunner. So we start delineating things such as the splitter islands, which are an approach, uh, which you will find on all approaches up to the roundabout, which divides traffic uh, from inbound and outbound from the roundabout. And then also curbing along the perimeters of both sides of the roadway. And then, and uh, go ahead to the next slide because I think the central island is shown there. Okay, so this is just two more pictures of what it looks like. Uh, so that the forms were shown beforehand and then prepping for the base. <clears throat> and this is what it looks like after the uh, concrete has been poured. Next slides. And here's the central island. So many, this uh, roundabout uh, here is fully traversable. Uh, many of our roundabouts are, uh, some of our roundabouts, I shouldn't say many, some of our roundabouts are smaller in size. One that would be close by uh, the, for reference purposes would be Pontiac Trail, excuse me, Seven Mile and um, Pontiac Trail. It's okay, I had it right. And that is more, that's a smaller footprint of a roundabout there based on um, uh, the geometry that was available to us and right away that was available to us. This one's going to be larger in nature because of the geometry, existing geometry of the two uh, intersecting roadways. Although uh, sometimes there are abilities to put um, enhancement features within the center roundabout, this one right now is not planned for it, but that's something that can be accommodated uh, down the road should uh, someone desire to do one under permit, say Salem Township, for example, or some type of uh, someone else that, that would like to do so. That's, that's something that can be uh, deliberated and considered at a later time. But right now, there is no plans for any type of enhancement within the larger size center island of this roundabout. Next slide. And Mark, I'm sorry, when you say that, you're talking of like the roundabout as is planned right now will look similar to what we see in this photo. Yes. Where it's got concrete and it's got the colored concrete to, de to delineate, but it's not going to have like a sculpture or, you know, landscaping in the middle of the roundabout. That's what you mean, right? That's correct, Emily. Okay. Thank you for uh, clarifying that. Yep. Okay, so once we have the center and splitter islands and outside curbing, that's when we go to paving. Uh, so we put the uh, asphalt uh, down up through three different layers. Uh, those layers are based upon uh, the amount of traffic and the truck trough, tr uh, truck volumes that will be going in and out of the intersection there. Our roundabouts will accommodate those types of vehicles. So there's no need to uh, be concerned of that. 
uh, trucks as just as much as a sedan will be able to, and farm equipment for that matter, will be able to traverse through this intersection. Next slide, please. So this gives you uh, an area view of the type of pavement markings that we'll be applying. Uh, it'll be similar to what is going to be provided at uh, uh, Pontiac Trail in North Territorial Road. This is Wagner and Miller and Styro Township that was recently built. So you see arrows for the circulating roadway. You see the yield signs, the yield markings, and then you'll see yellow pavement markings that's dividing traffic as it's approaching up to the Splitter Islands. So pretty simple. Next slide, please. Okay, so what will this project have as far as an impact to traffic? Being that it's gonna be closed to 10 to 12 weeks projected wise uh, between mid-June and up to or before uh, Labor Day, we are going to be closing that intersection to what we'll call through traffic. What do we mean by through traffic? So if you were living in South Line and had to commute to Ann Arbor, you will not be able to drive through that intersection. Uh, because it's just a safety measure for you uh, and the crews that are working there. It has a tendency to disrupt uh, construction progress because things get uh, wrecked, uh, ruined, uh, destroyed as part of when traffic drives through the, uh, the, to the project limits. We will be providing access to uh, anyone within who owns property within the project limits. So Edis Market, the Flower Bar, uh, the dentist's office that uh, is owned on the southeast corner. Those are things that we will accommodate to the property owners to make sure that their patrons slash customers and just anyone living who may be living, I can't think of any houses per, per se, specifically inside the project limits, uh, will provide access to those individuals. Next slide, Emily. And this is the proposed detour route. It is not pretty, but Reason why it is so long is that because we want to, uh, being that these are two commercial corridor routes, we want to post traffic to be using paved roadways. So we don't want to take people down uh, gravel roadways just a half mile in each direction. That's not to say that people won't do that, but we don't encourage it through postings. So this is the posted detour route, which will be a uh, mi six mile road to the north and uh, using Plymouth roads, Curtis road, and um, Plymouth Road on the south boundary there. Next slide, please, Emily. Some, we're a little bit premature, but we'll, we'll touch on it on one slide here because for those of you that live within the project limits, this is always an important question to you and understandably so, that you will be provided mail delivery uh, on projects. We will work with the uh, trash callers to be able to get your trash pickups. Uh, a lot of times we put the onus on the contractor to you place it by your curb, they'll take it outside the project limits and then they'll take collect, once it's collected, they'll, they'll bring it back at the end of the workday to your property. So that's typically how we work that out. And we will provide yard restoration uh, to those that are impacted by the construction of this roundabout project. Next slide, Emily. So if you want to find out more, uh, please visit our website at wcroads.org. You can subscribe to receive project um, uh, updates. Uh, Emily can provide that information. This is my contact information. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, whether it be prior to construction, during construction, these are the two best ways to get a hold of me. Uh, be my responsibility to look into your inquiries and uh, provide answers as best I can to uh, any inquiry or concerns that you provide to us. Thanks, Mark. So I'm going to pause my share here just for a second because I'm going to show you where you can um, find the project web page that Mark just mentioned, and then we will go into Q&A. So Mark, will you just confirm that you can see my the website there? It is confirmed. Okay, great. So um, the Road Commission's website it is wcroads.org, and we spend a lot of time, my shameless plug, but we spend a lot of time trying to have this be a very robust and useful website for anybody interested in road projects, road work, or just general road information about Washtenaw County roads. So if you go to the uh, wcroads.org and you go under this road work and construction tab at the top, you can see our current projects page. And as this loads, we've got a great interactive map for 2021 projects. So each of these road segments links to a project page about different road projects and projects that we are involved with as a road commission. 
Uh, we also have 22, as Mark has mentioned, that this is this Pontiac Trail in North Territory Road project is actually a 2022 project. So we have a project page created. You won't see it yet on this project map because it's a, not, not this year, but if you scroll down here, you can see all the different project pages that we have going. And so we'll scroll down, it's in alphabetical order. You can do some sorting at the top if you're, if you're feeling uh, risky or if you're, if you're interested. But you can see here, we've got this Pontiac Trail and North Territorial Road roundabout page. We're gonna go to there. I've got a link in right to this page in the chat as well. I'll share it again after the screen share so that you can go there directly. Uh, but this is the project page that we talked about. So we've got a little bit about the project here. We will fill in more information as we get closer. And then we also have Mark's contact information here. We've got our announcement about today's meeting and we, this is where we'll, we will put put project updates, road advisories as we get closer to construction. We will do another uh, information meeting as we do get closer to construction next year. Uh, and so we'll put all that information here under the latest updates. We'll also include helpful links. So down here is where we will post a link to today's video right here on the webpage. We've got the detour map already posted. And as we get closer, as I mentioned, we'll have more links here to share. Uh, we can probably post a picture of the overview that we shared in our slides as well. So you can kind of get a feel for what the uh, the rendering looks like right now. Uh, and lastly, you can also click this button here to subscribe to receive project updates. And that will take you to this page where you can see, again, a shameless plug, but we do more than just project updates for our larger projects. We also do road advisories for construction going on within a township itself or just uh, general advisories to people about work that's coming up. So you could subscribe to receive any of that here on this page. You can say which townships you would like updates on. If you only want to learn about what, what's going on in Salem Township, just mark Salem Township. And then you can say what type of emails you'd like to receive. Uh, we do a weekly road work schedule that goes out every Thursday. If you're curious of everything that we're doing across the county, uh, we do advisories, as I mentioned, we do a newsletter. So you can subscribe, you can pick which kind of emails you want to receive. And then lastly, if you do want to receive project updates about a specific project, including this one, you'll notice here and you just want to check next to there that box and you'll be able to subscribe and then you'll get email updates as we post project updates to the website. So you just hit subscribe here and if you ever have any issues, let us know and we can help you along with this process. So let me stop my share uh, and I'll go back to the slides here for a second. All right, hold on, I clicked the wrong button. Okay. So now we're gonna go into Q&A. And as we mentioned, I've got instructions as to how you can do that if you're joining us uh, and you'd like to ask a question. So if you are joining us from your computer or smartphone, you're gonna first click the reactions button or look for the participants button at the bottom of your screen. Since I'm screen sharing, it might also be at the top of your screen. It really depends on what version of Zoom you're using. They like to move things around on us. So look for that reactions or participants button. And then you should see a raise hand button. And then if you are joining us from your touchstone phone today, you can raise your hand by dialing star nine. What I'll do is I will unmute people one at a time with a raised hand and you can ask your question and we'll provide our information and then we'll go on to the next person. Uh, so at this time, is there anybody that would like to either virtually raise their hand and ask a question, or you can always ask a question in chat and I can read that out to Mark for his, uh, for his answer. And while we're waiting for individuals, uh, for those people that are impacted uh, by the project, impacted mean within the corridor of the project, our, our right-of-way agent, Kurt Bro Curtis Brochet, I believe has introduced himself to everyone uh, with, within that where the road commission will be uh, inquiring about needs uh, for our project. And he will continue to be uh, our point of contact in relationship to any land needs uh, concerning uh, that, the, this project in and of itself. Thanks for clarifying that, Mark. So we do have a question here, a raised hand from, uh, this user's name is Galaxy Note 10 Plus. I'm gonna ask if you wanna unmute. You should be able to unmute yourself. Yes. Hi, yeah, uh, go ahead. Please, if yeah, you would introduce I, yourself too. Yes, uh, my name is Remus Pascu and I live at 5139 uh, North Territorial. And uh, 
sounds like uh, the project is going to affect my property quite a bit. Uh, my concern is my privacy. I uh, Back when I moved here, back in 94, uh, I planted some uh, pine trees at the road and uh, they uh, they are they dampen the noise from the road and uh, keep my privacy and my property. And I saw quite a few of those uh, pine trees. They are marked to be cut down. Uh, how uh, how is my privacy going to be restored uh, after uh, uh, the project is done? Uh, uh, sir, what? You said you lived on North Territorial Road? Yes, I'm uh, going uh, west from the intersection. I'm the second driveway. Okay, so you're on the west leg. Are you on the south or the north side of the road, sir? North. North side of the road. Um, I don't have a specific answer as far as the trees that you speak of, um, but I, I, you know, if they, if they have a tag on them, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be removed. Um, but I definitely want to look into that question uh, and have Kurt and or I get back in touch with you uh, on the on your specific question, um, because that is uh, part of this process where anyone that gets impacted, this is, a, this is an example of being impacted as a property owner, where we have a dialogue with you on that discussion. Um, typically, it is not a, what we say, any trees within what we'll call the road right of way. They're not replaced per se, um, but we do have a dialogue, like for instance, like should you want the wood to be kept for whatever reason, uh, we do work that uh, discussion out with you. If there are any trees outside of the road right of way, then that's a different conversation in that Kurt will talk to you about some type of reimbursement based on market value of the trees that would need to be removed. Um, but that, so that's a conversation we can have. I know it's not a very specific answer to your question, but being that I don't have the specific details right in front of me, I don't want to make assumptions and guesses and then mislead you. Sure. Yeah, it's not a problem. Uh, Jesus, would you be able to share your contact? If you want to just message me as the host, if you want to share your contact information, I can um, provide that to Mark after the meeting, or sure. you can always just contact Mark directly. I, I'll share his um, his contact information to get Absolutely. it either way whichever way you want to do it yeah it, it, i have no problem sharing my uh uh phone number okay uh, yeah you if you want to just put that in the chat that would be awesome uh i have to put it where oh if you want to just message it to the chat just so you don't share it with the whole group with all the sure. meeting participants yeah if you just want to put it in the chat box or you can call me directly sir and uh we'll we'll make sure if I don't pick up, uh, just leave me a message and we'll make sure to get back in touch with you. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll do that. I'm going to. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All yeah. right. We do have a question that came in through chat and then we do have two raised hands. So we'll go to chat first and then we'll mix in these raised hands. So Mark, this question comes from Terry and she just has some general concerns, I think about access to Edith and the flower bar. Do you want to talk a little bit more about what that'll look like? I know we're still early. We're not quite into construction, but if you want to yeah. just talk about what that will look like, and then we'll provide more info as we get closer to. So Emily, can you go to the last slide? There you go, thank you. So uh, funny that that question is being asked right now um, because uh, I had a conversation with the owner of Edis Market uh, an hour ago uh, concerning this very matter. And uh, right now, uh, Edis Market is, I'll just start with them and then we'll work our, our way over to the flower bar. Uh, right now, um, they ha have a proposed site development with Salem Township where they're looking to redevelop their land and provide new amenities with that. Uh, they will be able, as of the current state of the design right now, you can't see it on here, but their footprint is going to uh, have unrestricted uh, left-hand turns from eastbound North Territorial Road to turn left onto their property. What the uh, design does not accommodate at this moment is a direct left from Pontiac Trail, uh, northbound Pontiac Trail to turn left into there. That is a discussion we're going to have, thank you, that is a discussion we're going to have with uh, the owner of Edis Market uh, later this week. I'm going to uh, circle up with my team, my design team, put our heads together and see if we can accommodate something such as that. That is what you see uh, segueing over to the flower bar. 
on the east leg of North Territorial Road in that there is going to be a gap that's provided for left turns to uh, make uh, get and gain access from North Territorial Road into the flower bar. Now, likewise, on Pontiac Trail, the north leg there, there is not an access point similar to Edis Market proposed today. Uh, we are going to look into that and see um, how, um, if there's any amenities that we can provide to them to reflect something that would be similar to what you see on your screen here of the east leg of North Territorial Road, where it's gapped out for traffic to be able to provide left turns in there. Okay. So I, I believe that's probably the concern that's being expressed um, based on uh, the question posed. If not, we I can uh, get a clarification. Yeah, Terry, if you want, uh, if you have other specific concerns, let us know in chat and we can um, be sure to address those as well as best we can today. So we do have two hands raised. So I'm going to start with the user with the, the Galaxy S9. So you should be able to unmute yourself now. This is the Galaxy S9 user. All right, let me, oh, there we oh, go. There we go. We, we can hear you if you want to, hello and welcome. And if you want to um, ask or introduce yourself and then go ahead with your question. Hi, I'm Debbie Mamruf. I'm Edith Market. Hi, oh. Debbie. How are you? I have really two pleased. questions. One you already addressed was the concern on uh, Pontiac Trail for a left-hand turn. Yes, ma'am. The second one was in your presentation, you said something about trash pickup and making sure the trash, how about for people who have a six yard dumpster? Very good question. So again, that is going to be built in, yeah, right. You can't move those things to outside the project limits. So that, I'm glad you brought that up. We will make accommodations and requirements within our specifications for the contractor that they have to provide access for uh, a larger size uh, receptacle, if that's, if that's the proper word I'm using for a garbage truck to come in and be able to collect your trash I don't know if it's weekly or bi-weekly or something of that nature, but the same will apply for the flower shop as well. So thank you, Deborah, for chiming in and, and, and clarifying that. Yes, I, that's uh, weekly for us. I weekly. don't know about the flower okay. bar. Okay. But it's weekly for us. Well, and we'll make sure concern. that that's going to be in the contract uh, specifications so that they understand that that's uh, a non-negotiable and that's something that they're going to have to provide so that uh, your, your trash is picked up on a weekly basis. Okay, I'm aware that your footprint is not totally set right now. But looking at the roundabouts you showed us, they do not have that long entryway. They have yellow lines accessing the roundabout that do not have the concrete barriers between the two streets. The two lanes going in opposite directions. So I'm hoping that you can shorten that one on that side. If you can't- I can look into that. Sure. Um, the one you showed us literally had a very, very small, it had yellow lines into the access point. I will when take a look showing. at that and I'll, I'll talk to my design team. Um, that's that may be something that we can um, uh, re re tweak with this footprint and see if that's a, a feature that we can incorporate based upon your concern that's stated. I, I think we can, uh, that, that may be something we can work out there, bro. And I'd also like, uh, well, I can get that online, the copy of the reroute, but that only gives you the copy of the reroute from Plymouth Road. There is no reroute going in the opposite directions like Hamburg or. Do you or, mean the detour um, map, Debbie? Pardon me? Are you talking about the detour map that we showed? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we could, we've got that posted on the website already, um, but we'll, yeah, it, it, it that's, counts that's both only, directions. I believe that's only allowing South Lyon to Ann Arbor. What about the East West? It, it incorporates the same route. It's, it's to the South. Does it? Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> that's a long way around. Well, and, and, you know, full disclosure that not everyone's going to follow that. They are going to be taking side road traffic. It's just like I stated in my presentation uh, for the commercial vehicles. We want them to stay on the uh, paved routes. 
Um, so that is the detour route that will be posted. So it is sufficient, it's, it is significant, it is long, but that's the reason why. Interruption to our business? You said limited. Does that mean there will be access in and out every day? For the, for the most part, ma'am, absolutely. We will provide access to your business so that patrons can get in and out. There may be, uh, I'll say, mm, up to a half day where there's something very specific going on where maybe one of the two entrances will need to be closed okay. off. But, but for the most part, uh, that statement is factual and true. Okay. See, I paid attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Deborah. We do have a couple more people with questions. So if you've got other property specific questions, you've got, I know you've got Mark's contact info. I think but... I got them down pretty good. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Thank All you, right. Debbie. So let's go. We've got uh, our next uh, question comes in from Moto or next person with a raised hand is Moto Z3. Uh, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Hello. Hello. We can hear can you. Do you, you want to introduce yourself and give us your question? Uh, my name is Nancy, and I live uh, between Edis Market and Mr. Paskew that you spoke with earlier. Um, I, how much of the property are you planning on taking on the north side of Territorial to on the uh, west side? Uh, to my, uh, I don't have the plan right in front of me. Shame on me. I should, but I don't. Um, to my knowledge, ma'am, Nancy, none. Uh, I don't. I do not believe we're purchasing any property from you. Okay, so they are not necessarily cutting down all those trees that are marked. Apparently, like you said, told Mr. Pass. Yeah, that's that's what I want to make sure to verify, so I don't mislead anyone in that conversation. So, um, I, that's definitely something I can get back to you as well, Nancy. Just like I can get to your neighbor, Pascu. Okay, because um, we have a lot of um, trees and brush up there, which does. Uh, limit the noise and everything. So pretty much what is happening is you're taking from the dentist office most of his property then. A it significant like amount will be uh, purchased from uh, the Johnson property. That's correct. Now, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to mislead anyone. Sometimes we do take remove brush and trees from the road right to way. So we're not purchasing anything from, from, mm -hmm. from you. Right. I think you have 15 feet from the middle or something like that. Uh, 33 feet. 33 take. feet. Yeah. Okay. So, and that doesn't necessarily mean we're taking every square inch of it if there's something needs to come out. You know, we, we are sensitive to that. Uh, it's called context sensitive design. Uh, it costs money to do that, to remove a tree. And if it's unnecessary, it's not something we desire to do. So we look into all those aspects when uh, we're putting the plans together. Okay. Yeah. I was not really happy about this because we can barely, with normal traffic, we can barely get out of our driveway. Um, now, and if there's not going to be any stopping, everybody's going to keep going around these, in, you know, around the circle and not having to stop, we're never going to get out of our driveway. Well, that is a common concern, Nancy, that's posted uh, by people that live very close to a roundabout. With the intersection volumes uh, being close to being balanced, when there's a left turn that happens, you're going to, that's going to create a stop excuse me, yeah, I mean, stop. It is gonna create what we'll call a gap for downstream for you to be able to utilize to exit upon the round, to exit onto the roadway. It will take a little bit of timing uh, to get familiar with those cues, with those gaps, but um, I uh, want to articulate to you that it, it will not be as difficult or horrendous as maybe your mind is portraying that it will be. Well, I know right now, I mean, everybody has to stop and it's so backed up that I can't get out and nobody lets you out because we're so close to the intersection. Mm -hmm. um, they just want to keep going. But when everybody keeps going, I'm never going to get out. <laughs> Nobody's going to stop. That's all I'm worried about. <laughs> I, I really do believe that those gaps are going to be present there based on my experience with, gosh, 15 different roundabouts across Washtenaw County. So I do not I understand your concern. I'm not belittling your concern. I can just tell you from experience that often those uh, concerns do not come to fruition from the property owner after the roundabout is constructed. Well, that would be great. We do call it, Nancy, he, he is Mr. Roundabout here at the Road Commission. So he has the most experience out of any of us of building these. So, um, but we appreciate your questions. I'm gonna move on to our next uh, person with a raised hand. Uh, so we've got Celia, if you wanna unmute, should be able to, um, oh, there you go. 
Hello. Hi, we can hear you if you want to introduce yourself and ask us your question. So I am Celia. Uh, my family owns Flower Bar. Um, so we have <laughs> lots of concerns, but I guess our main things would be so we're not going to be able to stay open during this construction. I mean, all of our customers are commuters and there's, you know, it's going to be more expensive for us to stay open than to, you know, close. So our business is going to be compensated at all for that because we're essentially going to have to close for three months. Well, the short answer, unfortunately, is no, but that is a conversation I'm going to rely upon Curtis Brochet to reach out to you and have that uh, based on federal statutes and what our obligations are concerning that. Um, I, I don't have it, many more details, but Kurt is our expert, our in-house expert on those subject matters, and he will make sure to be in touch with you to have uh, in-depth conversations on that. Okay, and then um, you are taking our sign down, like our huge sign. So how are we going to be, you know, is, is something else going to be put up? Because that is on you know, your property, but it's our, you know, signage, so. Absolutely. So we understand that in order for your business to uh, continue flourishing uh, and, and operating, that you're going to need some type of signage. This, that's not uncommon that sometimes these are in what we'll call in the way, uh, but those details can be worked out uh, where we figure out uh, where that sign can be located thereafter. And then I, I don't know specifically uh, it, would any compensation be involved in that, but that is definitely a conversation for, in addition to uh, the previous question that for Kurt, for you and Kurt to have uh, concerning that matter. And we will uh, take um, those into consideration before we go out to bid for a contract uh, this winter. Do, do you wanna uh, again, provide your contact information? We may already have it, but if you wanna put your contact info in the chat to me, I can share that with Kurt or we've got Mark's contact information and we can get you Kurt's contact information. But if you want to uh, send us your the best way to contact you in the chat, I can share that with Mark and with Kurt. Okay, yep, that's fine. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, okay. Cecilia. And then we do have one more raise hand, but we do have a chat. Let's do the raise hand first because they've been waiting very patiently. And then we do have a question in chat. Uh, so this is another Galaxy S6 or S9. I'm not sure if this is uh, our previous S9, but uh, if you want to go ahead and, uh, yep, we should be able to hear you now. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, Do you want to uh, introduce yourself and then ask your question? Yes. This is Robert Morris from Dutch Hill Drive. Hi, Robert. I, I spoke with you, Mark, about a year ago regarding traffic simulations before yes, and after. Yes, right. sir. And I'm glad you called because I lost your phone number and I did look into that. So um, go ahead and ask your question so everyone else knows what you're, what you're, what you're inquiring about. My, my previous concern was turning left or westbound onto North Territorial from Dutch Hill Drive and the imposing traffic moving eastbound and the speeds that we would be incurring for that traffic as they move eastbound, causing a potential hazard for anybody leaving Dutch Hill Drive turning left or westbound on the North Territorial? Yes, sir. So um, we looked into that. Like, I, So we were having that conversation where during our, conver uh, our phone call, it was my suspicion slash opinion that because of the way that the roundabout works and slowing traffic down, and because it was moving closer to the intersection, at an optic of you would be you would be uh, telling you, my goodness, tra traffic speeds are going to be difficult coming out of the roundabout now. Uh, it's only going to get worse because it's getting closer. I had a different opinion whereby because uh, of the uh, distance from where a car stops on North Territorial while heading eastbound from the stop bar, that the speed limit of the vehicle that's going to be passing Dutch Hill Drive whether at the current state of the st stop sign or with the roundabout was going to be uh, at worst, no, it, was gonna, it wasn't gonna be any worse. In other words, speeds weren't gonna be any higher than they are today. And conversely, it may even be a little bit better. 
we did do some traffic counts. I would like to get back in touch with you because I don't, it's been, gosh, it was last fall when I did this. But the bottom line was, I can tell you, is that the speed limits were close to, from memory, 35 to 38 miles an hour today as they are coming, uh, the average speed as it's uh, approaching. And the, not the speed limit, right, Mark? The average speed. Sorry, thank okay. you, <laughs> of the vehicle, thank you. Uh, as it approached Dutch Hill Drive. And I am of the opinion that it will be closer to, say, 33 to 35 miles an hour for the average vehicle as it's approaching uh, Dutch Hill Drive after the roundabout is built based on the geometry. So my position was at the time, it will be no worse than it is today. And I still have that opinion uh, uh, after investigating it. So I'm happy to go into a little bit of a deep dive with you on the phone. I know that you're an engineer and at heart, so you get these things. So uh, I can look, research where I uh, find my data and, and we can have that conversation should you like to have one. I feel fairly confident that you've researched this out. I have done my own analysis and I kind of come up with the same answer. Um, but it's good to hear that you have reached that conclusion also. I'm, I'm willing to go with your numbers. And I apologize I didn't call you. I, I, I looked all over for your phone number and I couldn't remember your last name. And then I was like, oh gosh. And, and I was hoping you'd call me someday. And well, at least we're here we are today. So thank you for and your patience. And if I could give you my phone number, I don't want to do it in an open environment, of course. Uh, I don't know how we do that. But so I have your number, so I'll just call you, Mark. Very good. Call yeah. me. Leave, if I don't answer, leave me a message, and I'll make sure to uh, put it in safekeeping this time. Okay, thanks. Thank Robert, you, sir. And you could put it in chat, too, if you wanted to. There's a chat feature on the bottom of your meeting. Um, Celia, I did get contact information for Celia, so I'll share that with uh, Kurt and Mark after this meeting. So thank you for your question. And we do have a question in chat, and this comes from John. And he's asking, won't the left turn lane for commercial businesses potentially cause significant backups into the roundabout during peak times? So I think he's talking about those cutouts. Not necessarily, there won't be a, a dedicated left turn lane, but I think those cutouts in the splitter islands is what I'm guessing he's talking about. Because of the, uh, okay, so his question is, will it create backups into the roundabout? For, for the most part, the answer is no. I can't promise you that that would be 100% of the time based on the time of day. But based upon the entry speeds and circulating speeds of that roundabout, uh, it should not be problematic to the point where it will create gridlock or create a safety concern. So when you balance it out over 24 hours of the day, uh, we would only provide such an amenity to a property owner if we feel it is safe and reasonable to do so uh, to accommodate their needs without jeopardizing the safety of the public. If I, if I answer that question uh, to what they're seeking, if I misunderstood, I, I they so. can clarify. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Mark. So I think we've gotten through all the questions in chat and we don't have any more raised hands. If you if you'd like to raise your hand now, uh, kind of last call here. So you can do that by looking for either the reactions button or the participants button at the bottom of your screen. And then you should see the raise hand button if you're joining us from your computer or smartphone. And then if you have called in, you can raise your hand uh, on your phone by dialing star nine. So kind of last call for any raised hands while we're waiting to see if anybody else has a question, we'll go back to Mark's contact information. So again, this is Mark's direct line and his email address. And then I showed earlier, I'll include a link one more time in the uh, meeting chat, but you, where you can find the project webpage. We really encourage you to sign up to receive project email updates. We will provide updates when we do, but ahead of our construction information meeting that we'll do next spring. Also ahead of when the actual closure is happening, then we'll provide uh, regular updates during construction to anybody that has received, has subscribed to receive those via email. So it doesn't look like we've got any other questions with ra or people with raised hands, Mark. Is there anything else that you'd like to add for very, the good I'm of very the grateful for everyone participating. Uh, again, uh, please do not hesitate to call me as you may have uh, con future concerns or uh, thoughts and happy to take your calls and figure out, uh, provide answers accordingly. Great. Thanks, Mark. And we will have the meeting recording of this presentation along with the uh, the rendering that Mark has showed us that is still a draft, it's, it's not final, but that rendering, uh, we'll have that posted to the website, that project webpage in the next day or two. So we appreciate everybody coming out today and joining us for this virtual meeting, and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.